Hi, I'd like to talk to you about vernacular resources for local communities. In particular, about mother tongue resources for local churches and pastors. First, a thought or two about the different language possibilities for Christian resources. Vernacular languages have huge advantages. They speak to us quicker because they're the language of the marketplace and the home. And they speak to us deeper because they're the language of the home and the language of the heart. But the imperial languages, English, French, Portuguese, Lingala or whatever, the languages of the conquerors have advantages too. They're convenient, they're the trade languages, the languages which enable us to speak with our neighbours of different tribes and tongues. And very often they're the languages used in education. They're the language of writing. But this poses us a problem of media. Because with conventional translation and publication approaches, we have high setup costs. The cost of translation, the cost of preparing to print or whatever. The high set-off costs can only be offset by mass delivery. So we go to print, radio and such technologies. But that combination of high set-up costs and complex technology means that we have to produce resources primarily in the imperial languages. The result is to some extent, however hard we try, superficial communication. With the vernaculars, by contrast, we'd get rich communication in an oral medium, an appropriate medium. But the resources would be small scale. There are few people who speak any particular vernacular. And so there'd be no economies of scale. So medium and scale are a problem for us. Our choice of mass media means, however, that pastors must, whether we like it or not, whether they're capable of it or not, learn to be literate. Learn not just to read words, but to deal with whole swathes of words. And these words will come to them in another language. They must learn the language of empire, the language of theology and church, in order to learn about Bible and God. The result is that to some extent Christianity becomes or remains a foreign religion. Pictures like this are all too common still around the world, both on people's walls, though without this nice frame, and in people's hearts and heads. Vernacular resources have been aimed largely at lay people only. It's the only way to get the numbers. They're rare and they can't be quickly adapted to changing circumstances because of the setup costs. So that's where my idea of vernacular oral translation comes in. It's really quite simple. We supply laptops with a load of books on to senior pastors. The senior pastors agree to read a chapter a week and as he or she reads the chapter to translate it paragraph by paragraph into their own mother tongue and as they translate it paragraph by paragraph to record it paragraph by paragraph. It's fairly quick and fairly easy though admittedly the translations are going to be pretty rough and ready but that's not entirely a disadvantage because you see the rougher and readier the translation the more likely it is to be better contextualized to use imagery and thought patterns that are also local so that not just the words, but also the thought has become local. This is deep translation, even though it's rough and ready. Distribution is also not a problem. You see, the primary means of distribution would be the mobile phone. And, as you are well aware, mobile phones are coming close to being ubiquitous. They are found in all sorts of places 
where you would never have expected such high tech. And they're familiar. People all around the world are used to using mobile phones. And with AMR compression, a mobile phone can hold a huge amount of voice files, of audio books. There are some places where mobile phones aren't available. Where they aren't, we can provide MP3 players as a cheap alternative for where phones haven't reached. Because MP3 players are cheap as chips, down to about five or ten US dollars if you buy them in bulk. So, in summary, this is an idea for vernacular mother tongue resources for the local church. It's low cost, relatively speaking. It'd be about $400 for the equipment, US, for a church district, for a language group. And that's mainly the cost of the laptop, with a bit allowed for MP3 players if they're needed. It's appropriate technology because the equipment is already rugged. You may not think of laptops as rugged, but think of the one laptop per child project. Those laptops are designed rugged, and they're cheap. And MP3 pairs and mobile phones are already rugged. This project is thoroughly localized. It's local people producing resources for local people. It's thought patterns and words and languages of local people used to teach each other. And it's high impact resourcing. Low cost, high impact. And dead simple. Now, of course, I hope you're thinking about what I've been saying and I hope you're thinking of problems. I hope that if you do think of problems, you'll email me and get, get in contact. Because I reckon what problems there are, are surmountable. And some of the problems you might be surprised to find turn out to be advantages. Tim at carey.ac.nz Carey shouldn't be hard to remember now, should it? God bless.